Hi, I'm Black Bright. Um, <clears throat> and I think sometimes a lot of people think that this Windrush scandal is something that happened last year and they wonder why it keeps cropping up. The reason why it keeps cropping up is because it's affecting people now. Not just the Windrush people, but it's affecting their offspring, the extended family and those who have been living in the country ever since. Now, we have to remember the Immigration Act of 1971 meant that all, all the people of the Windrush were allowed to be citizens. And up to 1988, their wives and their children were allowed to come out, they were allowed to bring them over and they were, <coughs> they were citizens too. Now after 1988, things changed. And because of the hostile environment policy, which I didn't even realize was in force from 2002, well not the hostile environment policy, but they were deporting people since 2002. Now, if it wasn't for that gentleman who had cancer and who went to the newspapers or the newspapers found him because he, was, he didn't have access to NHS and he didn't understand why, none of us would have known about what was going on. We wouldn't have known that people were being deported and they relied on most of them being the elderly. I mean, when you think about the Windrush generation, there are people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. That's the Windrush generation. And they were kicking them out through the back door. As usual, quite deceitfully. So now we have a situation where grandchildren, children and grandchildren, are still here trying to get their stay based on their mothers and if their mothers came after 1988 and they didn't get settled status at that point their children and their grandchildren are going to be faced with problems and issues getting a status so as a result if they didn't get settled status before now it's going to be extremely difficult to get it, regardless of how long you've been in the country. The, the UK government have a feel responsible for the Windrush generation up to 1988 and before that. They, ha they do not feel responsible for anybody after that, that time. So anybody who entered the country after 1988, they're going to have problems justifying if they are if they are trying to do it through the Windrush. They're going to have problems justifying it because it's not going to work. If you're coming in and I don't know how other else you can claim it, but they are only protecting, in quote, those um, who were here before 1988. Technically, it's 1973. It is actually 1973. Those are the guaranteed people. But there is, a, in a, you know, for the family and children of the Windrush, born in the UK, they're accepting that up to 1988. Now, even those um, who were showed evidence that they were Windrush um, generation, would you believe that a lot of them still didn't get settled status? They were put on indefinite leave to remain, which means that at the end of every couple of years when it runs out, they're having to fork out thousands of pounds to stay in the country. So what is that telling you? We have to think about those Windrush generation who came here legally and who, because they came here legally, didn't feel they needed documentation for years and years. And they were, they were um, victims of those the um, the rent, the people not sorry rent the letting agents, the landlords, um, the employers, everybody set up against them because they were ignorant of their status. And you know the sad thing about that is that people have died. 
People had their homes and lost it. People in jobs for 16, 17 years, 16 or 17 years and lost it. And you would think that the Home Office would accept uh, national health insurance contribution records for 35 years and, you know, confirmation from the Inland Revenue if they were legit, if they weren't trying to be obstructive. But somebody showed them 35 years worth of NH national insurance records. And would you believe they said it's not enough to prove that they're in, to prove that they're legal? Now, if that's not being obstructive, I don't know what is. I mean, on the one hand, you're saying you want to help and you want people to show you evidence. What more evidence can you have more than that is a government body? national health insurance stamps telling you that this person has contributed for 35 years. You have inland, re inland revenue records to support that and then you're still saying that that person is illegal. So that means really and truly you don't really want them here. Why don't you just bloody say that? Why don't you say that you do not want any more legal immigration in the country? You don't want anybody applying for indefinite leave to remain, whether legal, whether they're legal or not, whether they're entitled to it or not. Why don't you just say that instead of trying to make it as hard as possible, taking people's money when you've got no intention of awarding it, making them stressed out, waiting for a result when you've got no intention of giving it to them. And yet you have the audacity to take their money. Either you put it through and you give them a reasonable time in which to turn it around. You know who's eligible and who isn't. You know what kind of evidence there is that qualifies these people to be in the country. So stop playing with their minds. Let them do, instead of taking their money, they can do that. They can do something else with it. But these people, they've got no recourse to public funds. While you're holding them hostage, they can't work. They can't, they can't rent. What can they do? Where are, you're not even allowing them to exercise their human rights because you are starving them and it's not their fault. Just because you change the bloody laws in, in midstream, it's not their fault. And OK, if they had a responsibility of finding out certain things, at least have a little, you know, a little compassion and say, OK, we understand this. We've looked at your records. And if you feel as though they're not right, then of course, then tell them. Why are you holding it on for months? I know people who've been waiting nearly a year to hear from the Home Office about whether or not their status. And then they've got the audacity to say if there's any gaps. I mean, I know they say if it's the Home Office waiting for a decision. But the thing is, it still creates gaps in their continuous residence. And down the line, do they have proof of that or is that proof enough? I think that the Home Office is deliberately try being obstructive with regard to um, regularising people. I think they're doing what America is doing. America does not want legal immigrants. OK, they, you know, they don't want illegal immigrants, but they don't want any more legal immigrants any anymore either. They don't want anybody naturalising themselves. And they're looking for the slightest little thing, even a traffic offence, to ship them off. So like I said, whatever America's doing, England is doing too. But they're much more sneaky, sneaky with it. But all I'm saying is it's not fair on the individuals. Because if, if you don't want them in the country, and you feel as though you cannot accommodate them, and even though they're entitled to be in the country because they're lawful and they're making legal. I know people that are making a legal claim. They've got continuous residence, no criminal records, nothing. And yet they're being held on indefinite for hostage. They can't work. They can't pay their bills. I mean, what is this? What is this? 
I mean, the hostile environment policy is really working. It's supposed to force people to go back. And I think holding on to people's indefinite leave to remain, holding on to the decision is a part of the hostile environment policy. It's another aspect of it that is forcing people to give up and go back. But have the balls to say it to people. Don't let them give you bloody money and then you're not going to award them what they're paying you for. It's not right. Anyway, I don't even know if I've gone off course here, but I'm going to stop now. I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to look into the Windrush scheme, which is going to be a separate video. I can't crash everything in. There's still a lot to talk about, but for another day. Bye bye.